The series is sponsored by HarperDB. HarperDB is a distributed database and application development platform that's focused on developer experience. With flexible user-defined APIs, simple HTTP interface, and high-performance single-model data store that accommodates both NoSQL and SQL workloads, HarperDB scales with your application from proof of concept to production. Install and manage on your hardware or let them host it with HarperDB Cloud. They even offer a free forever tier and you can check it out from the link in the description down below. Hey everyone, my name is Vishwas and welcome to the much awaited series on React testing for beginners. Now what I'm trying to do is make this channel a one-stop shop for everything related to React. So far, we have tutorials on React fundamentals and advanced topics, React hooks, React TypeScript, React Redux, React Router, React Material UI, React Styled Components, React Storybook, React Query, React Table, React Formic, and React Render. To add to this list, we are going to learn React testing with Jest and React Testing Library. Let's begin with a brief introduction to testing. As a developer, our primary goal is to build software that works. Whether it is a website for our best friend's business or a social media app like Instagram, the primary goal is to ensure it works. If it doesn't, it simply does not matter how much thought we put into improving the user experience or the performance. To ensure our software works, we test the application. That is, we check if our software works as expected. For that, we typically rely on manual testing. An individual, for example, you or a dedicated resource from the quality assurance team will open the website, interact with the website, and ensure everything works as intended. If a new feature is released, you repeat the same steps. However, depending on what the feature is, you may have to test not only the new feature, but also the existing features to ensure the app as a whole continues to work. And because of this, manual testing has a few drawbacks. First, it is time consuming. If you have to test the entire app when a new feature is released, it can take you anywhere from a few hours to days based on how large your application is. And when there is complex repetitive tasks involved, there is always the risk of human error. Not only that, given the tight deadlines, you may not even get a chance to test all the features that you should. These drawbacks will eventually lead to shipping software that doesn't work as expected. Now, what is a solution to these drawbacks of manual testing? Well, the answer is automated testing. Automated tests are programs that automate the task of testing your software. You're basically writing code to test the software code. Yes, there is additional effort required when you develop a feature, but the initial investment will pay off in the long run. First, Automated tasks are not time consuming in the sense they do not take up the individual's time for hours or days together. They are run by a computer in a few seconds or minutes. Second, they are reliable, consistent and not error prone as a computer is really good at doing repetitive complex tasks. They follow the same set of steps every single time. Third. It becomes very easy to identify and fix features that break tests when changes are made to the software. As a developer, you can immediately verify other developers' work and ensure it is not broken. Finally, it gives you confidence that the software you're shipping works as intended. Hopefully, you now have an idea of what is testing, what is automated testing, and why automated testing is helpful. With that in mind, 
Let me now go over the course structure. As the video title indicates, this series is intended to teach you how to write automated tests for a React application. As part of this series, we will understand more about Jest and React Testing Library, understand the fundamentals of writing tests in a React app, test components with user interactions, test components wrapped in a provider, test components with a bit of mocking like API mocking, and understand a few topics about static analysis testing. By the end of the series, you will have a fundamental understanding of testing React apps, which of late has become a prerequisite for a React developer applying for jobs. Now then, to make the most out of the series, you must know the fundamentals of React. I will also be using TypeScript. If you're not familiar with TypeScript, please do watch my React TypeScript series before continuing. You don't have to learn the advanced topics in that series, but the first few videos where you learn how to type props, state, and the basic hooks will be very helpful. Of course, if you wish to, you can still proceed and learn TypeScript along the way. All right, with this in mind, let's get started in the next video by understanding what exactly is Jest, what exactly is React testing library, and why do we need two libraries to test React apps? I'll see you in the next one.